financial accounting 7D inventory dollar value LIFO calculations. This is Ken Boyd, the owner of St. Louis Test Preparation. Here's our Facebook page. The email and the website and the book Cost Accounting for Dummies that is now available on Amazon. I think this dollar value LIFO is a very difficult concept. And remember that this is a way of valuing inventory. We are valuing inventory. So here's our question. A company purchases $15 million of inventory on 11X3. They decide to use the dollar value LIFO cost assumption for inventory. And for these ending three ending dates, we have the ending inventory at our current cost, and we're given something called a cost index, which is a way that we adjust different layers, different buckets of inventory, if you will, for price increases. So the first thing we're asked is to calculate the inventory valuation for the end of these three years, X3, X4, X5. So step one of that process is to compute something called inventory at base cost, which is essentially taking the inventory and backing out the increase for the cost index to get you back to where, to get an apples to apples comparison without inflating the costs or multiplying by a cost index. So simply put, we take the ending inventory at current cost and we divide by the cost index. So I'm going to put divide here. So for example, in year X3, it's the 22 million we were given divided by the cost index of 1.1, which gets us back to the original inventory at base cost of $20 million. So I'm just going to do it for one year. The next thing we do is to say, well, how much did the, in did the inventory increase over that original 15 million number that we were given in the question. Well, for example, in X3, we take our inventory at base cost that we just found out in step one, 20 million. We were given a beginning inventory balance of 15, 15 million. That means that the increase in inventory over the 1-1 X3 balance is, 3 million, is $5 million. 20 million minus 15 million. And I do that for each year. And you'll also notice that over to the right, because I'm going to need this later, <clears throat> I say, well, what's the increase in the base cost year to year? Well, here it went up 5 million in X3. It didn't go up over 5 million in X4, so the change is really zero. The increase, we're 3 million over in X4, we're 6 million over in X5. That year-to-year -year difference is three million. Six minus three. We're going to need that later on. We then apply the cost indexes indices to the layers that we computed here in step two. So, for spe specifically, let's take X three. The increase in inventory over that one one X three balance is five million. We multiply it by that cost index we were already given. And now we get the valuation of the extra layer of $5 million because while it was $5 million at base cost, it's $5.5 million when we apply the cost index. You'll notice that for year X4, there's our $3 million increase. We multiply it by the same cost index because if you look at the base cost, X4 actually declined. And if I go back up to the top, you'll see why. Inventory at base cost declined from 20 million to 18 million. That's why this was not an increase, because in terms of base cost, our inventory went down. Since our inventory went down, we're going to use the X the year X3 cost index for that $3 million layer to get 3.3 million. For X5. We have the $3 million layer we already computed, and then we have that increase from $3 million to $6 million, that $3 million increase. And we're going to take that $3 million increase, and we're going to multiply that by the X5 cost index to get that portion of the cost index 
at the ending inventory valuation. So once again, these numbers are not adjusted. These are at base cost. These increases are at base cost. Cancel. These increases are adjusted for the cost index. So that's the difference. Step four says we compute the ending inventory valuation. So we take way back to the beginning, that inventory that we started with, 15 million, 11x3. We take the layers that we just figured out in the step above. So for example, in step three, this number, if I click on it, the 5.5 million, I figured out right here, when I multiply $5 million increase in inventory times the cost layer, I got 5.5 million. There's the 3.3 million below it, right here. That number agrees to the 3.3 million for X4, right there. And finally, this number, The six points, the six million six ninety is the sum. If I click on it, of these two numbers above, we had two different layers for x five. The three million times the one point one, the x three cost index, and the three million times the x five cost index. So if I take the beginning inventory fifteen million way back at the beginning of the question, and I add in the inventory valuation. For each cost layer, I get the ending inventory valuation for each year adjusted for the cost index. And that's what these numbers represent. The last step is, well, what's the LIFO liquidation effect? And we're going to, for X4, and we're going to assume that there were $10 million in purchases for X4. Okay. So the beginning inventory, if we assume liquidation, the beginning inventory is the 20,500. Purchases are given in the question. The ending inventory is the 18,300. 18, Again, these two numbers tie to step four above. And so we get cost of goods sold because remember that this is the basic inventory formula. Beginning inventory plus purchases, less ending inventory, gives us cost of goods sold. Now, if we don't have liquidation, look at the difference. We do start with the same beginning inventory. We have the same purchases, but we have an additional layer of purchases that's assumed $2,240,000. So how did we get that additional purchase assumption? Well, way back in step one, when we had inventory at base cost, we had 20 million in X3 and 18 million in X4. Again, base cost not adjusted for a cost index. The difference is 2 million, which means that our inventory went down by 2 million. If I adjust it by the 04 index, our inventory went down by 2,240,000. So here's the reason. Since the base year cost declined by $2 million, this $2 million represents an additional amount that was sold in addition to the purchases. An additional amount that was sold. And we assume that it's sold because the inventory went down by $2 million, so we must have sold it. In other words, we would need to buy $2,240,000 more in inventory to avoid our inventory being liquidated. So we sold 2 million more than we purchased 10 million. So as a result, if you scroll back up, we have an additional purchase layer that causes our cost of goods sold to be higher, 2,240,000 without liquidation than it is with liquidation. So what we did quickly was, if I scroll back up to the top, We used our base numbers here, step one. We computed the increases over the base amounts in step two. 
we multiply by a cost index to get the ending inventory valuation for each cost layer using a cost index in step three. We added those valuations in to get an ending inventory valuation in step four. And then in question two, we calculated the liquidation effect with and without liquidation. So that is dollar value LIFO. Remember on the website, stltest.net, in addition to tutoring services, we have our accounting video textbooks. Right now, we have the Accounting for Investment course, which is a three-hour course, and you can click on this link, which takes you to um, this page, which explains the course, the three-hour video textbook course in full with the Excel spreadsheets used to create the course and practice problems. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll see you next time.